Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. We've got Dr. Crow from Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for another edition of Inside the Training Room. Austin, how you doing? Fantastic. Hey, I want to lead things off uh, talking a little uh, Wade Miley with you. So uh, we know Wade Miley. I had to go under Tommy John surgery, but Brewers.com uh, a couple days ago had an article up there where said uh, the surgeon was, quote, super happy with Wade Miley's hybrid elbow procedure. So I guess first thing, I know I sent you the article and such, but what mm-hmm. what can you kind of give us a little bit of a background or maybe basis, what is this hybrid surgery that, that they're talking about? Yeah, so we talked about it when we first talked about his injury, about the main options, and uh, with treatment of UCL injuries, which is, of course, what the Tommy John surgery addresses, so if it's a partial tear, often we go in and do what's called a repair. So we're leaving the native ligament. We're basically putting anchors on each side of the, of the joint, so one in the humerus, one in the ulna, and we basically anchor that back down, and then we're able to kind of suture and pull the native ligament. So we keep the ligament. That's called a repair. The other option is what's you know, the, the true Tommy John surgery, which is a UCL reconstruction. We harvest the tendon, usually one from the forearm, and then we drill tunnels, and we loop it through and recreate it. Well, this is a hybrid, um, so it uses both techniques. So you'll basically do the reconstruction. So you'll drill the tunnel, put in the new uh, graft. Additionally, you'll basically back it up with this hybrid fixation. So you put in uh, one of those, quote-unquote, internal braces. Now, that's a brand name, so it's uh, Arthrex is the company that makes it, so I'm sure they love that everyone's kind of mm-hmm. using it their name. There, any company that has an anchor can do it, but this one is kind of special because there's some special properties to the suture. Long story short, it has the benefit of a complete reconstruction if the ligament's fully torn and you don't think a repair is possible, but it does back that up because normally we basically either have sutures tying it down to these little what are called interference screws holding it in place, the internal brace creates a much stronger construct to allow earlier rehabilitation. So the the thought is, and studies have proven it, that you can get these guys back throwing faster. So um, it is a little more technically challenging because you're both putting in tunnels and you're putting in anchors. So you kind of have to dance that a little bit. Um, but when it works well, it seems to work very well for these pitchers. And so I do think that that's going to be kind of, um, a more common procedure, again, especially some of these studies in the last couple of years that have come out and shown the outcomes of doing reconstructions with uh, the repair, so the quote-unquote hybrid procedure. So that's kind of what my next question was going to be for you, is if this is something that you know, allows maybe guys to, to throw quicker or get back quicker, could you see this being maybe more of the, the norm procedure when it comes to a Tommy John surgery? I, I do think that that'll probably catch on. Now, I mean, like a lot of things, when technology first comes out, like these newer implants, it catches a lot of people's attention. It's not uncommon for a first study or two to show a difference, and then later studies refute that. So unless we see a change in the in the data, though, I suspect you are going to see a trend going towards that. So, I mean, that's what we try to do as surgeons is, is we try to follow what the data tells us to do. Um, you know, there's an art to medicine always. So people don't fit into a box, so it's not like you can take a patient and always say this is exactly the right treatment plan for them. You always have to take a look at all the variables. But as a whole, when we have a problem, we, we always try to say, look, is there is there a study that tells us this is going to be more successful versus that? And then we try to make our decisions based upon that. So as of now, it does look like that's likely going to be a an opportunity to have the similar success rate with a faster recovery, which obviously is ideal because then you're you're not – because if you, the faster recovery caused the higher failure rate, that trade-off may not be worth it. But if you have similar success rate with a faster recovery, that clearly, especially with a pro athlete, I mean, it's not that we don't care about high school and college pitchers, but when these guys are doing it for a job, um, it's certainly pretty important for them to get back out there and, and make a living. So this might be a stupid question because when, when I hear brace and, and faster recovery, I go back to, hate to bring them up again, Aaron Rodgers and Achilles because didn't he have like a mm-hmm. brace or something like that with with his Achilles injury that was that was well, supposed to be. Well, it's funny you mention that the uh, exact same company is Arthrex. They're they're very good at marketing. Um, <laughs> so yes, so basically that, that it's the same concept. So it's the same suture to, uh, that's used. Um, but yes, it is in the same fashion where you anchor something in to back up the repair. That's what that speed bridge is. That's what that's called. Um, and so that that's the same concept is that with that repair is that in addition to the sutures holding the ten now Achilles is virtually always an actual repair. The difference is is you also pull a set of sutures down and anchor it into the calcaneus or the heel bone 
to back up the fixation. So in some regards, it is similar to the hybrid technique where you're doing, um, in this case, a reconstruction, but you're, you're augmenting or backing it up with this, this uh, anchor tape construct, which is, again, similar to what Rogers had in, in Achilles. So um, that one has not been studied nearly to the same extent as far as accelerated recovery. So that's why you don't have a, a hat to hang on with, like, yeah, he'll get back a lot faster. I mean, in theory, does it make sense? Yes, but there's also, even these guys, I mean, it's not like these pitchers are getting back in, in a couple months. I mean, it's still a long recovery. So it's, it's going to be faster, but it's still a long one. And that's why when Rogers was saying, yeah, I'll be back in, you know, what was it? I think one point he said like six or eight weeks. I mean, it was just like like Thanksgiving. I think he less, said, "Yeah, yeah." It was more or less laughable. Yeah, no kidding. So this is going to be a, a really dumb question, but you know, brace. <laughs> uh, so like brace it and quicker recovery. Is there like any you know maybe looking into the future? Maybe they've tested this. I don't know. But ACL injuries. Is there something that could be something similar to to that, or is it just like the anatomy doesn't work for for a knee injury? You're a lot smarter than you think. That actually is something that's out there. Yeah. So, and guess what? It's Arthrex again. So, um, the studies on that are definitely not as solid. So, there is debate on that. So, the company is a proponent of it. So, they recommend doing it. So, with their ACL reconstructions, they recommend putting one of those braces across it. So, you have your ACL graft and you put the suture across it. The studies have not borne out the data um, quite as well. Um, and so, most of us are not doing that. I'm sure there are select few surgeons out there that are doing it, but for the most part, um, but absolutely, there is an implant that is designed to do exactly that. So that was not a dumb question at all. Interesting. So, I mean, is is the common thing here just it, it's a brace and, and anchor points? Yeah, exactly. The idea is that you're taking a, a something that you're repairing or reconstructing, and there's always, that's always a weak link. So you're getting tissue to heal in, and it's it's it takes a while. It's biologic. It takes. So what do you want to do? You want to support it during that phase. Um, and so that's why the the concept is. Is there a way that we can quote unquote back it up or as they have dubbed it and, and obviously clearly their marketing team knows what they're doing, an internal brace. So it's a brace on the inside. You don't have to wear a brace on the outside because the brace is inside. So whether that's across the elbow, whether that's across the Achilles, whether it's across the knee, those are all concepts that, that are, and they do make sense. I mean, logically you're like, well, geez, if I put a graft in there and I can back it up with this really strong suture, like, doesn't that make sense that it would support it? Um, and the answer is, yeah, it does make sense. It just, Things don't always bear out that way. So you want to, again, follow what the data tells us. And, again, on the ACL internal brace, the data is not quite as good. The UCL, it seems a lot more uh, promising. Interesting. Interesting. Dr. Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, joining us here this morning. Uh, staying with a knee, but Mike Trout, uh, we, we know one of the better baseball players out there, but uh, mm-hmm. he decided to have surgery to repair a torn meniscus in his left knee as he thought it was a better alternative than postponing the procedure and and being a designated hitter for for the rest of the season, I thought it was interesting when when he said he doesn't really know when it happened. Uh, he he said the knee soreness worsened during an April 29th game. Uh, he said he kind of mm-hmm. woke up and he had to ache, and then one day he couldn't walk, so he doesn't really know when it happened. But when it comes to, to is that, is that kind of I guess similar to a lot of people with with a meniscus where maybe they didn't realize when they tore it or or, or injured it, or is that not the norm? Um, it can go both ways. I mean, in younger athletic people, and again, I know Mike Trout's not a, a young baseball player, but he's still a young human being. So I would, I'd categorize him as a younger patient. Um, generally, they do know. So it is a little atypical not to have an exact moment where they remember it. I mean, most of the time it'll be an athlete that comes in and says, I was playing soccer, I cut and pivoted, you know, or someone rolled up on me, or I was playing football and my knee twisted, things like that, where they are like, something happened. It is not uncommon, though, to have someone who comes in and says, you know, my knees are bugging me on and off, and you know, so it definitely can happen. As we get older, so now you shift up into like the 50s, 60s, 70s, atraumatic meniscal tears are very common. And, and so on those patients, the debate is the meniscus tear, even the cause of the symptoms, and that's a whole other topic. But um, in this setting, I guess a little atypical, but not unheard of. Certainly, we definitely get people come in and say, I don't know. I think most of us believe what likely happens. They had a small tear from a smaller injury that was maybe mildly symptomatic. And I mean, let's be honest. I mean, these athletes, I'm sure they have aches and pains ding you're everywhere, right? So mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, you know, I kind of, my knees all bummed out. They're getting icing treatment. And then something happens and it takes it from small to medium or medium to large and all of a sudden becomes much more symptomatic where it wasn't like an event. It just kind of happened. And so then they're not able to kind of pinpoint the exact origin. So either way, with a repairable meniscus tear, if it heals correctly, um, he should get back and be ding your 100%. Those surgeries tend to work very well. Now, 
healing rates are not 100%, so that doesn't always happen, but I would sus- uh, suspect that it should heal and get him back to being being uh, top-notch, which is certainly he has always been, uh, in his career, one of the elite players in Major League Baseball. Absolutely. Uh, last question for you. It's more of kind of like, uh, I guess, an opinion one, but I was hearing or listening to, to Dan Patrick the other day. It might have been yesterday or the day before. Kind of talk about, you know, the Knicks, and, and I mean, those guys play – a lot of it's like Josh Hart played 48 minutes, and that's kind of something they've done all year where their starters are a log in a lot of minutes. And and the question that they were throwing out there, is this something that's sustainable? It's a little old school in, in that approach. But, you know, when when you see these guys, you know, maybe playing 48 minutes, minutes a game there and going back to a little old school there, is that different in the, in the trends from what maybe you've witnessed or, or seen across any other sports league out there? Because we always talk about load management, and it seems like the mm-hmm. Knicks are doing something completely different at this point. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, load management came from the NBA. I mean, that's where that term was coined. I mean, we see it in other sports now, um, but no one does it quite to the extent that the NBA does. So, But if you look historically, I mean, teams didn't always do that. I mean, think how many minutes Jordan played back in the day. Um, and now, obviously, he's a elite athlete, shall we say. Um, so I don't think everyone can follow in those exact footsteps. But I, I think if you look at it, if these athletes are able to tolerate it and are in condition enough, I mean, I don't think you're going to see a dramatic change in injury pattern or, or kind of overuse injuries. But you, I'm sure they're keeping their fingers on that pole. So if these athletes are presenting with any of that, so a sore knee, sore Achilles, you name it, they're probably getting some – quote, load management. Um, On the flip side, if they're doing well, they just keep pushing, which, again, historically has been done in the NBA and other sports where they just push, 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 push. So I guess I think it's probably case-by-case basis, but it has to have the right athlete in the right circumstance. Mm -hmm. All right. How do you feel about your Timberwolves tonight? Game three, two big road victories, man. Oh, goodness gracious. I mean, you know, against the reigning champs, do I really think that, Jokic and uh, Murray are going to have the kind of kind of slumps they've been having. Maybe I mean I think the Timberwolves defense has a big playing a big role in that, so it's not mm-hmm. just coincidental. But I, I I'm a, I'm afraid the Nuggets are going to get one. But man, the Wolves are playing great, and I am I'm high on them right now. So I think I think they win at least one of these next two, and then win the series. I I, I agree. Uh, I agree with you. So it's it's really fun to watch that team. I mean, it looks like it, it just seems like they were prepared for the series against the Nuggets too. Like they're giving them some unknown looks and such, and just kind of catching them by surprise. Yeah, I mean, and, and the refs are letting them play. Um, it's it's a lot of it is admittedly a lot of contact, but it goes both ways. I mean, you see that both those guys when they're whether it's Ant driving or whoever, I mean, there, there's guys getting banged around and they're letting them play, which I think does probably play to the Wolves' favor because we're aggressive on defense. But, I mean, we were the number one defense all season long, so it's not a coincidence that we're we're causing trouble for them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He's Dr. Caro, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Dude, appreciate the conversation as always, buddy. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Happy Mother's Day. Make sure you spoil the, the better half the, this weekend. Will so uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you again soon, okay, bud? Yep, you as well. Take care. You got it. Dr. Crow, Chippewa Valley Orthopedics and Sports Medicine inside the training room.